Hello, this is Andrew from Sprog DCC. Welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to look at the LCC starter kit, the contents of the box and the initial setup. The Getting Started sheets explain where you can get more information, including downloading user guides and other documentation. The RJ45 cables are for connecting up the LCC nodes. The button led test board for testing your network as you build it. The USB LCC for connecting the network to your computer. The Servo IO LCC is a 16 channel IO module that can also drive servos and the power LCC for injecting power into the network, a power supply and the terminators which must be fitted at each end of the network. If you are interested in LCC please like our videos, subscribe to our channel and set the notification for future content. For this demo I've mounted the modules onto a board to keep everything tidy. On the left is the power LCC with a terminator plugged into the spare port. The network is connected daisy chain fashion from the IO LCC to the USB LCC and then to the servo IO LCC which also has a terminator plugged into its spare port. The button led test board is connected to bank A of the servo IO LCC. The initial setup assumes the use of the Windows operating system. You will need to adapt these instructions for MacOS or Linux. Open the Windows device manager and expand the ports section. Connect the USB LCC to your computer. Note the port that has been assigned to the USB LCC. In this case it is COM8. Open JMRI and create a new connection profile for the USB LCC. You can give it any name that means something to you. Click OK to open the new connection. The JMRI startup wizard will open. Select LCC as a system manufacturer and the Sprog DCC Limited USB LCC for the system connection. Select the COM port that we determined from the device manager. Click finish to complete the setup and the main JMRI window will then open. Basic setup is now complete and we'll take a closer look at the LCC support in JMRI. The traffic monitor shows messages between the nodes on the LCC network. The Configure Nodes dialog allows us to examine each node that is connected. Initially the node tree shows JMRI and the USB LCC. When we apply power to the network, the Servo IO LCC will start up and announce itself with messages being seen in the traffic monitor. The new node will appear in the network tree. Opening up the Servo IO LCC leaf in the tree shows some basic information about the node. Click on Open Configuration dialog to read the full configuration description information or CDI from the node. This will take a little while with a complex node like the Servo IO LCC that has lots of configuration options. You can see the messages in the traffic monitor in the background here as the CDI is being read from the node. The CDI is broken down into a number of segments. The identification segment shows the manufacturer, model and versions of the node. This cannot be changed by the user. You can open or collapse a segment by clicking on the arrow icon. The node description segment can be edited to give a user friendly name and description for the node. In this example I've named the node test node 1. Notice that the text entry box changes colour to highlight that it has been changed. After changing a configuration, you can use the right button to write the change to the node. You can also make a number of changes and then use the Save Changes button to write them to a node all at once. Before trying to operate the node, you must use the Update Complete function. This will restart the node and the new configuration will take effect. Now I'll give a quick tour of the configuration segments available in Servo IO LCC. Bank A can be selected as IO or Servo outputs. 
There are eight I.O. channels in each bank, and each channel can be given a unique name. The configuration options are the same for each channel. The channel function can be input, output or button led, which is combined input and output on the same channel. Outputs may be configured to generate single or repeating pulses. Channel polarity can be normal or inverted, and duration and units can be set for pulsed outputs. Each channel has six consumer and six producer events. Consumer events are received or consumed from the network and can cause the I.O. channel to change state. Producer events are sent or produced to the network when something changes state on the I.O. channel. Each event can be given a unique name and the default event number can be edited. Consumed events can cause an output channel to turn on, off or to be toggled. Producer events can be produced for a range of actions, including outputs being turned on or off and for servo position reporting. Bank B has the same channel I.O. functionality as Bank A, but can also be used for setting servo positions in conjunction with a button-led test board. This will be covered in a future video. When Bank A is being used for servo control, the servo segment may be used to set up servo operation for each of the eight servo channels. This includes the on and off positions, speed of movement, whether or not the servo should move at startup, whether multiple servos move together or in sequence, and whether the control pulse should be removed once the servo has reached its position. The button segment allows events to be produced using the two buttons labelled blue and gold on the servo I.O. LCC. Two events are available for each button. The LED segment is used to control the two LEDs labelled blue and gold. These can be controlled by consumed events or used to monitor the traffic on the LCC network. That concludes this short introduction to the LCC starter kit. I hope it was useful. In future videos, I'll show you how to configure the modules to actually do something useful. In the meantime, please do consider subscribing to our channel and set notifications for the future videos. That's all for now, other than to say thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>